Oh. Wait. What if I... We're going there. We are going there. So brace for the hate comments because we're going there together. Do swords go shing? Well, yes and no. In fact, there's some historical precedent for it. I mean, we've debunked back scabbards, fight choreography, and that good swords actually break. But this, I didn't even check the water, but we are diving in. But don't freak out. I'll explain everything and confirm both sides of this argument because, well... Context, context, context all the time. So let's funk up this misconception. Oh, and uh, YouTube, that was funk, F-U-N. Okay, never mind. I'm not monetized anyway. So let's start by getting a uh, selection of sorts. Well, close, but that didn't quite work. But we can make it happen, like it would have historically, because swords were worn like this. When I draw it out, let's listen. Yes, it makes a swing. <sighs> That's not to say that this is common. But there's enough historical precedent for this to be a legitimate sound that would have been heard throughout history. Let's take the Renaissance, for example. Um, I need a buckler, and I don't have a buckler. Let me make a buckler, real quick. Okay, so the Renaissance was one of the few periods in history where, due to its size, it was convenient enough and almost expected at times for you to be carrying a shield with you basically at all times. And the way these things were worn was like this. Now importantly, what that means is when you drew it, you had to do the following actions. You had to first grab the shield, put it in the correct hand, grab your scabbard and draw your sword. Meaning this happened. Now, like I said, this wouldn't have been common, but when it happened, would have stuck in people's minds. So why do we use it so much today? Well, it's called the coconut effect. Whoa now! Yes, that coconut effect. It's what the audience at large expects, not necessarily us in the sword community who know that it doesn't happen at least that often. It goes along the lines of the rule of perception. It just doesn't sound right when it doesn't happen. Take, for example, audible space battles. Plus, it just sounds cool and gives the sword an audible sharpness in the same way that visually a lens flare might be used. It's designed to show sharpness and quality and in the industry, it's known as audible synesthesia. And it can also be added to create tension and drama. So is it common? No, not really. Especially when you draw a sword like that. But it has historical precedent when used in the correct context. But the trope had to have originated from somewhere, even if I couldn't find it after reading through hours and hours of Schauser and Beowulf trying to find a single example of anything of a sword being drawn making some type of no anyway no that's still fine like i kind of enjoy showers and bay also it was fun but in all seriousness if you can find historical precedent of this in written documentation of this where i couldn't let me know in the comments below but till next time train safe stay awesome and stay sword savvy all right this one has a metal throat i've got to be able to do this let's see I mean, that's pretty close.